we are in South Africa and today we're working with rhinos because they're doing something pretty cool. That helicopter should tell you so much more about this story. Continue to join the adventure here in Krutakan. The helicopter is used to actually locate the animal, put the dart in it, which has got a mixed cocktail of drugs, and also get in nice and close and drive the animal out into the open. Now, unfortunately, the helicopter can't land, so the vet has to actually jump from the helicopter to be able to continue his work because these drugs are very time sensitive. Now, the animal is blindfolded, the vet is getting in there nice and close to maintain that drowsy state and check the animal's condition. Now, pulling a, putting a rope around his back leg, pulling him down will actually keep him nice and calm. But unfortunately, he's laid down on his front foot. Now that front foot is where we're going to put the collar, so we need to get a bit of brute force behind that to get his foot out. It's hard to believe this big, gigantic, majestic creature was only moments ago minding its own business, walking through the bush, feeding, breathing, just doing what rhinos do. It's hard to fathom that we have to do something so drastic to be able to enable this animal to live its full life. No, I think we can catch. Okay, I do. Let me just put it. Yeah, come on, yeah. I brought the box. Okay, guys, so the collar's going on. If you don't want to have a look. These newly developed AI enabled conservation collars are said to be continuously observe, analyze, and learn to identify behavior specific patterns for each individual rhino. Now, registering abnormal activities related to possible poaching, fighting, mating, giving birth, or illness will actually trigger the collar to give an alert so that the ranger can actually pinpoint the position of each rhino and check him out. Every rhino is microchipped, so therefore every interaction with a rhino is taken into account and that microchip is recorded. What do you need? The vet has to consistently give small doses of the drugs because large quantities of the drugs are very potent and the potency of the drug will actually kill the animal. So it's just easy to give smaller quantities consistently. So what we're doing is we're actually measuring the horn right now. Very important information. We just put the first collar on the rhino. This collar is very important. It'll alert exactly what's going on with the rhino. So because the horns are used as a uh, identification thing, yeah. once we cut the horns off, we need to use the other increments. So we're looking at muzzle size, well, a few yeah. different yeah. dimensions yeah. there. Yeah. 24 inches. And, um, yeah. So what's 24 is 10 inches the yeah. other way around? It's pretty cool. Such a big beast, it's so big close. Yeah. Okay, cool. then notches that this one's got notches ready, so that's fine. Can we mark them? Um, no, we've done it already, yeah. Okay. He's getting the injection in the ear right now. Then, can, did you find a market chip? Yes. yes. Benji's taken a picture. Just fill in that market chip number. Just to make sure that he stays a little bit while we continue to work with him. Oh, you've got market chip. Not just playing with him for the sake of playing with him. And, uh, unfortunately, trim his nose a bit to make him a little bit more, um, not very appealing to someone else who yeah. wants to kill him for that particular item. Probably the sad part for me, I think. I can't believe it's worth that much to kill the animal. No, it's expensive to promote the animal. It's absolutely disgusting. It <laughs> smelt like a can of cat food. It's freaking horrible. <laughs> The 
The whole aim of what we're doing is to actually remove as much of the horn as possible to make the animal the least attracted to poachers. That includes trimming down as far as we can. So guys, what are we going to do? It's the hardest thing to comprehend that we're going to disfigure these beautiful creatures. They've got to lose their identity so that they can survive. All for this. I can't believe it's come down to this. When you look at it like that, what is it? It smells like shit. It does. It's not pretty. It's a little stumpy bum. So now we just got to wait for the big fella to get back on his feet. Now he's been down for a little while. Obviously you can imagine he's got a little bit of pins and needles going on in his legs. He's just got to move to get a bit of blood flow. He's a little bit shaky, but he'll come good very quickly. And hopefully he can make his way back into the bush and hopefully live a very long and happy life. Now here's the sad reality of what we were doing today. I can tell you now it was devastating to see that we actually have to disfigure an animal to allow it to survive because of humans. Look at this. This is what happens if we do not do that process. And you can look at this one right here in particular. You can see there's multiple times this has obviously been hit like a machete or a sharp object to actually remove the top part of the bone there. Basically the horn sits on top of here and grows. And what they've done is they've actually chopped through the top palate or the nostril of the animal itself to get that bone for its perceived value. It's devastating to see what humans do. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Make sure you hit me up on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram if you can help save Rhino.